So good afternoon and thank you for coming. You know, whenever I'm at a session, uh, I always like to have the last session of the day because I find that the smartest, best looking, most motivated audience comes to the last session, don't you think? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this session is about Runtime Insights. We're going to talk about how to troubleshoot your production applications, and in particular, how the modern cloud is evolving that process. I'm Brad Abrams, and I'm a product manager on the cloud platform team. And I'm Atisha Muditacharan. I'm a software engineer working on the Google Cloud Platform. So in a recent survey of developers, we found that most developers spend over 50% of their time finding and fixing issues in production. Why do we spend so much time finding and fixing issues in production? Well, it's because this is a really high stakes situation. When there's an issue in production, nothing else matters. You have to drop everything and work on just that. And when you're doing that, it's a very data-rich environment. There's lots to look at. There's logs and monitoring data. There's Git diffs to look at. But it's information scarce. Uh, it's hard to determine what the root cause is, what data you should actually be paying attention to. And if we're honest with ourselves, we have maybe an imperfect understanding of the applications we're maintaining in production. Maybe we didn't write all of the code that's there. Maybe somebody else changed things, or maybe new to the project, yet it's our job to maintain that in production. So we think in the modern way, in the modern cloud, we want to reduce this significantly. We want to take the guesswork out of production debugging, and we want to speed up that iteration cycle, the finding, fixing cycle. And one of the ways we're doing that is by providing you deep system transparency. So you know what your code is doing, and you know what the system code is doing. You have a good idea of what's going on in your application. So Google has been maintaining systems at a high scale in production for 10 plus years. So Atisha, as, as a developer at Google, you must have some really amazing tools to use. Yeah, we do. And things are pretty sweet here as a software engineer at Google. We get to build great products, work with awesome colleagues, get great food, and the occasional drinks on the beach. right? But even so, things do go wrong in production. And when they do, it can be really hard to find out what's going on. Our production deployment are complex. Many people, often many teams, work on one product. Um, and so when something goes wrong, one person can, uh, cannot understand every, um, the intricate details of every single, com every single component in the system. So fortunately, we have, um, we have powerful internal debugging tools that help us reason and understand our production system. And um, when there's a problem, we can figure out what's going on pretty quickly. And when we start working on the Google Cloud Platform, we wanted to bring these powerful tools to our users to help them understand and debug their production, uh, their production system. So today, we're going to talk about three tools that will help you do just that. We're talking about Cloud Logs, Cloud Trace, and Cloud Debugger. So in order to do that, we're going to launch the uh, MOG Translator, MOG Slater. It takes your boring text and turns it into vibrant, exciting images. We think this is going to sweep the internet after this conference, and uh, we're going to be multimillionaires. So let's switch over to the demo machine and take a look at, at what this looks like. Um, we're going to be ready for um, drinks in the city tonight, right? Yeah. So uh, we just enter that boring text, and we get these vibrant images. Um, we, what was the other one? Ha uh, oh, yeah, your, your grandmother has Yeah, a birthday, my right? grandmother is having her 84th birthday on Thursday. So happy birthday, Grandma. That's beautiful. What was the hot dog? Yeah, it's here. It's wow. Dog. It's it, a dog hot. It's hot dog. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um, it's a beautiful system. Um, we're already getting over one QPS of traffic, over one uh, query per second uh, of traffic on this site. Uh, it's uh, mostly simulated traffic. Um, but maybe we'll get some hits from you. 
But this application has a few issues. It's in production, under load, but has a few issues that we're going to walk through the rest of this talk, finding those issues and fixing them in production on this live site. So let's switch back over to the slides. All and right. I will go over the architecture of the Emoji Slater. Um, the web front end is an app running on App Engine within the managed VMs container. When it gets a query from the user, it, it consults a translation service and then it looks up the image on our Emoji Image Store, which is a layer on top of Google Cloud Store. Um, in addition to that, we also save the queries into the translation store, which is a layer on top of Google Data Store. And this is used to further analyze the query to improve our service and also to improve um, the latency of, of the request that the user sees. And all right. So uh, what we're going to do in this talk is First, Atish is going to take us through how we eliminate errors, uh, server errors, 500s, by t uh, taking a look at Google Cloud logs. Uh, and then I'm going to take a look at the latency of this application and how we can improve that with Google Cloud Trace. And then I'm going to offer a way to give you a deep insight into how your application really works in production with the Google Cloud debugger. All right, so finding problems in logs. Oftentimes, it can feel like finding a needle in the haystack. There are lots of data that's floating around, but there's not that much information that you can glean from the logs. So who here has ever been on call? Anybody? All right. So if you've ever been on call, you, you, have, you probably um, remember this feeling of getting paged at 4 in the morning when your system, when something's going wrong and, and your system is on fire. So it looks like she's still in her pajamas here, too. Um, so. So when that happens, you need to figure out what's going on, right? So your production system can often look like this. Um, there's a client browser that talks to an app server that consults a, um, a compute cluster that does a, a SQL query that, which um, stores the result in a cloud store, um, for example. And you probably um, replicate your production system as well so to, um, <clears throat> for fault tolerance. So there are multiple copies of your components now. So when one copy of it goes wrong, which one do you know? Which one, do you, which one can you tell right, that's going on? So oftentimes, people look at logs. But logs are everywhere because you have multiple components. And so the process of debugging systems with logs the old way is you find you're notified about a problem, you guess which component has the problem, you SSH it to the machine and look at the logs. If you find out, if you find the problem log, great. If don't, the cycle repeats. And once you find the problem, then what? You have to go to another debugging tool, re-enter the context of your investigation to further root cause the problem. Or if you're good, you just edit the code and redeploy. So what we want to do in the modern way of debugging with logs is to eliminate the cycle of guessing. We want you to be able to search logs in aggregate find the problem log right away, and from there, seamlessly navigate to other debugging tools without having to re-enter um, the context and go about solving the problem. So to do that, I will show you a demo of cloud logs with the Emoji Translator. So please switch to demo machine, please. Thank you. So oh, Atisha, yeah, it, it looks like the green bar there, we've got uh, a lot of 500 errors. Yeah, yeah, well, um, we've been deploying the service for a while, and um, let's check to see how it's doing. If I can click on this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So, um, demo guy. May, may I reload? <laughs> re <laughs> All right. Okay. So we we do um, we do see a lot of um, the. the the 500 yeah. errors, the, the... Yeah, we do see a lot of errors here. So the green line here that I'm showing you is the error lines. Um, you can see here they're, they're coming up. They're not, they're not really um, flat. So it looks like there's a problem there. Um, I haven't touched the deployment in a while. Mm, no, I didn't push anything. I've been at this anything? conference. It wasn't me. All right, I was getting my makeup done, so I haven't done anything either. So 
It must be the intern. It must be, it must that, be that intern, intern. we hired. All right. So, all right. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert back to a stable version that we have deployed so I know, that I know that doesn't have any problems. So this is a common thing we do at Google. As soon as we spot an issue, an alert goes off, we see a raise, uh, rise in errors. Before we go and debug it, the first thing we do is roll back to the previous version that we know is good so that we stop the experience that customers have right away. Uh, and so Atisha is doing that with App Engine, uh, switching it back to a previous version. Yeah, so once we do that, then we can, okay, rest assured that users are getting um, the responses and not getting the 500s. And then now we can go on and, and um, investigate the problem. So let's go back to the App Engine dashboard here. Um, if we scroll down through the so down the page, we'll see that um, there are a bunch of server errors, and a lot of them, and in fact, 33,000 of them coming from this request that um, translate. translate the emoji. So yeah, yeah. that's a lot of errors. That, that's 12 of, percent errors that's is a lot not of, good. That's a lot of errors. Yeah. So when is, conveniently, if I click on this link, it takes me straight to the logs viewer, and and it um, filters the logs to just the request path the request path that has translate on it, and with just status 500s. So notice what we've done here. We're actually running this front end on several uh, front end instances. We've gathered the logs from all of those front end instances. We've aggregated them and given you a chronological view. And uh, Atisha is going to show you how you can filter sort uh, that data all in one place. There's, so there's no more SSHing into each machine, checking out, is this the one that has the problem? Yeah, that's right. We can also filter just to see the error logs. So now over here we can see, oh, yeah, they're all errors. So, But if, if you want to make sure you don't only want to see error logs in your application, you can just filter that as well. The Logs Viewer also offers infinite scroll. So you won't have to click Next anymore to see your logs. You just scroll up and down, and we just keep loading the logs um, for you. And in addition, you can live stream your logs from all your instances. So, that's, so it's a tail dash F for your logs from, from every single copy of your deployment. This is a great vanity thing. Um, Atisha and I both work on the uh, Cloud Developer Console, and we do this. Just go look at what's going on. Uh, let me just see the amount of traffic that we're getting. What are people actually doing on the site? Yeah, so fortunately, we have reverted to a stable version, so we're not getting any more errors. Right. So as you can see here, the live stream is not showing us more errors, which is great. All right, now let's look at just one log here. Um, if you click on expand, the request logs will show you the app logs that correspond to that request logs. And there, there's a stack trace here where there's receptions being thrown. Hmm. I haven't seen this before. Yeah, but you know, it looks like some of those are blue. That's kind of a l indication that it might be a link. Well, it looks like this is our code, but I haven't touched this in a while. So fortunately, um, the logs viewer show you a link straight into the code that emits that problem. When I click on that, it takes me to the source browser and to directly exactly to the line where the exception is thrown. So uh, looks notice like that we actually knew not only where the source code was, but we knew what version of the source code correspond to what was in production at that time. We also knew what file and line caused that issue. That, that greatly speeds up the debugging. In fact, you, you can use this at Google as well, right? You have a yes, similar system? Yes, exactly. Inter our internal tools also offer these seamless navigation between the logs and the source, and they use it all the time. So all right, fortunately, there is a bug here. And it looks like, yeah, hmm. looks like somebody put an Easter egg into our code. Yeah, it's a, it, uh, in the case where we're translating the word die, it says, uh, what does it say? Ha ha, die, get it. It's an accept. That's, uh, it's not funny. Um, no, it's not, no. So it seems like our intern got a little um, excited and put this Easter egg in. So maybe we should take care of that. Yeah, so I can, fortunately, I can edit the code right in the source browser. I click Edit here, and, and it changes to an edit mode. I just comment it out. We don't need to throw this exception here. And I can just commit. And once I enter this commit message, take out Easter egg. So what's going to happen now is Atisha is going to commit that back to the free private Git repository that's associated with each cloud project. And then that will kick off our continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline. Um, that, in our case, uses Jenkins, syncs it down, does a build. 
uh, runs our unit test, if those pass, pushes it back out to the version she specifies. Yeah, it's going to take a while to that might take deploy, a minute. but fortunately we have a fixed version already. Yeah, what, what, show the deployment up. list. Do you have the deployment Oh, yeah, list? that's right. Yeah, so just Here to give it. a sense, we've been working on the demo a little bit. So there's the list of uh, changes we've made recently. You can look at the build logs, diff from, from release to release, what was the code change that happened, and we found that really handy. All right. So since we just, remember, we reverted to a fixed version um, at the beginning of this talk. So I can, let, let's go back and look at our errors and see what's happening there. All right, so back in the App Engine dashboard, um, the default now is 41, which we reverted to. And we can show error details for yeah. 41 within the past hour. And look, that has. Uh, <laughs> a lot fewer. There are no server errors that are client errors. Yeah, there's client out. errors. That's a different, that's the JavaScript guy's problem. All right. <laughs> okay, but our server is clean. That was the goal. Awesome. That's great. Can we switch back yeah. to slides, please? All right, so slides, please. So to recap, um, we showed you to, uh, how to roll back your production to a previous stable version when there is an error in your current one that you just pushed. Um, we also show how to filter logs from all the versions, from all, from all the instances of your deployment. And we also seamlessly navigate from monitoring to logs and to the source code and then fix the problem right in the console. So to recap again, cloud logs. You can search through all your logs. Um, just in, our, just in the single console. You can simply navigate from monitoring, from trace, and from source. And we're going to add um, more integration with other tools soon. There's infinite scroll and live streaming, which is tail dash F for all your logs. And it's available for App Engine, Managed VMs, and Compute Engine, which is coming soon. Thank you. All right. So Atisha just uh, talked to you a little bit about um, using cloud logs to debug the service. And I'm going to talk about latency. So um, our application's just been out for a little while. We've already got some users. Unfortunately, some of our users are not having the best possible experience here. And it looks like Lady Macbeth is running into a latency issue with our application. So let's walk through the process of tracking down Lady Macbeth's issue and getting a fix out into production. So if we look at our average response time, it's fairly respectable. 100 milliseconds is a pretty good average response time. But averages, when you're talking about the latency of an application, can be very misleading. You might naively expect your latency distribution to look something like this, kind of a standard bell-shaped distribution curve, with your latency along the bottom x-axis, number of requests up the y-axis, that, that it would be a standard curve. But if you've actually done some latency work, you know, it rarely looks like this. It must much more commonly looks like this, where you have a long tail of latency. Um, so when you're using the site, you fall into this green bar and you get a great experience. It's really fast for you, right? The bulk of your users maybe get a reasonable experience, faster reasonable experience. And then there's where Lady Macbeth is, way out there on the end. And psychology tells us that a few bad experiences like that have an outsized impact on users' uh, perception of the latency of your application. And to make matters worse, it looks like there's even a little bump in latency way out there on the end. So we call this long tail latency. So Jeff Dean is a senior fellow at Google. He wrote many of our internal systems, Bigtable, MapReduce. Now he's working on Google Brain. And he has a quote that we like to use internally. And that is that it's important to examine the long tail of a system, a long tail latency of systems, even when they appear fast. So what Jeff is talking about here is using percentiles rather than averages. So if you look at these series of latency measurements that we did, we can see the average is around 102 milliseconds, but the 90th percentile, that is 90% of requests have this, one, this score or better, this latency or faster, the 90th percentile is way up in the 300 millisecond range, which isn't really appropriate for this site. So it's much better to look at that 90th percentile. 
In order to bring this home, let's consider two applications. Say you have application one, which has this curve in blue, and application two with the red curve. Which one would you be more proud of? Which one would you rather have in production for your application? Well, if you've been paying attention, you know that we should ignore averages. Averages have nothing to do with this. We really need to know what the percentile, what is the 95th percentile for these two applications to help us bring that home. So if we look at this, you can see application one, while it has a faster average, has a much worse 95th percentile. And that's because application one has a long tail latency problem. So we want to avoid that. So let's take a look at a demo of Cloud Trace and how it can help you find that. So let's switch over to the demo machine. So we're back in the logs viewer that Atisha showed, and I want to point out the millisecond columns here. Uh, this tells us we, we're measuring how long each HTTP request took from the time it entered the server until the time it returned something back. Um, and these numbers actually look pretty good, Atisha. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah. some of them are. All right, yeah. Well, let's click on one. Notice these are uh, blue again, so we can click on them. So I clicked on this first one, and it brought us into Google Cloud Trace. Google Cloud Trace is an HTTP profiling utility that helps you see the exact time you're spending on your application. So let me zoom in here so you can get a better look. The green bar, the 40 milliseconds, that's overall from beginning, from the time it hits your server until the time it leaves, it was 40 milliseconds. Of that 40 milliseconds, 28 of it was in a data store put. So in this case, what we're doing, the translation request comes in, we do the translation, and then we store it into the data store. That takes the 29 milliseconds. If you examine a few of these requests, you'll start to get a feeling of the variance um, that is common for data store. And this gives you transparency. Is it your problem that the application is slow, or is it Google's problem? Um, so this will really help you uh, isolate that to see if you know, our data centers are having a bad day, which rarely happens. Um, but it gives you transparency, and you can find out what's going on with that. But again, this latency actually looks pretty good. There's not much wrong here. Um, Let's go back and look at the trace list. So the trace list shows us uh, we're profiling um, almost every request that comes in. We do some sampling so that this can be an always-on service. Uh, and you can see here we're getting pretty good uh, latencies on here. But yeah, but you know these are all just anecdotal evidence. Yeah, don't this, you want to collect some statistics? Yeah, see, just like an engineer, right? She wants to actually get some data to make a decision. Um, so let's see if we can help with that. So we'll switch over to the reports tab here. And what this will do is give us an opportunity to create a report over a large series of data. So I'll click request report. And the, we want to look at that translate um, URI. And then on the version, we want version 42. And let's just look at it over the last hour. So I can click Submit here. And that's going to take just a minute to run out over all our data and uh, do a report. I happen to have done one earlier uh, to save us a little bit of time. So let's take a look at this report. So if we drill in here, um, notice it, it looks similar to what we saw before, where there is uh, a most of the requests. So sorry, the latency in milliseconds is down on the x-axis, and percentage of total requests are along the y-axis. So we want everything to be um, to up and to the left in this case. Um, but what we're seeing is there is way over here at the 4,000 millisecond range, there's a little hump of requests. That's the long tail latency. Yeah, that's where Lady Macbeth. Yeah, that might probably. be where the experience Lady Macbeth yeah. is having with our site. Um, so let's see if we can isolate that further. So if we scroll down in this report, what you'll see is an actual breakdown uh, by percentile of where your latency is being spent. So we can see we're actually having a pretty good experience at the 90th percentile. So 90% of the requests are coming in at 21, uh, 200 milliseconds. And if you want to have just an OK service, you can stop there. But if you want to have a great service, you need to go look at 95 and 99.5 uh, latency. And there, you're getting six seconds. That's a ridiculous amount of time. So um, what we've done to help debug that is that we've actually grabbed a few sample traces. So give me a few that fall into this category so that I can examine those more. 
So which one should we should we check out, you think? Yeah, I think we should look at the 95th percentile. 95 yeah, percentile. Yeah, how about the first? Yeah, we'll just look at this first one, one here. Great. Uh, so again, it looks very similar to what we saw before. The green bar is the overall amount of time. But now we're seeing a call to URL fetch. That's the uh, App Engine uh, way it goes out to the public internet to download data. So Atisha, why are we in the middle of a translate? <laughs> why are we calling URL fetch? Let's ask our intern. Uh, that intern. I don't know. Yes. So we don't intend really that. Comfy. to. So we, we now, just, just by looking at this data, we have some indication there is a mysterious URL fetch. Um, maybe if we view the logs. So I'm going to click on the logs uh, here. And notice what this is going to do. We actually are filtering the logs by this unique request ID. So take all the gigabytes of logs that we have and show me just those logs that are from this one request that we pulled out of that sample report. Yeah, and I just want to recap what Brad just did. So he just went from the logs viewer and checked out um, a, long, a request um, latency and clicked that and went straight into the Cloud Trace UI and then looked at the trace reports and um, even checked out some of the traces and then and then um, navigated back to the logs viewer, all within the developer's console without having to leave it and re-enter information. Everything is seamless. Very integrated experience. Yes. So if we look at this logs, we see uh, this line that's highlighted is in experiment for getting related Twitter feeds. Are you doing an experiment on Not that either. sounds suspicious? And then if you look at the rest of the logs, it looks like we're actually pulling data from Twitter into the logs. That's um, that's very troubling. So uh, let's go. Atisha showed you how to look at the source code in um, the Cloud Console, but many of us have developer tools that we know and love. Uh, and so let's look at my favorite one, and we'll look at the source code on my local machine. So here I can come and search for that experiment. <laughs> it looks like it was already commented out. Um, what we see in production looks like this. Uh, oops. So this is what's in production. Um, and what we see there is it looks like, it looks like we're doing some experiment, uh, like 5% of traffic is actually getting a Twitter feed. That's, uh, that's kind of troubling. Um, I don't think that's the right thing to do here. So what we'll do is just comment this code out and then have a conversation with the intern later about that. Uh, and then at this point, what we can do is just use tools we know and love. So uh, we use git already. So we can just do a git commit to our local machine, then do a git push to send that up to the uh, cloud. And that will uh, trigger our continuous delivery pipeline that will do a build on Jenkins, run our test if those pass deploy. But again, that'll take a minute. So um, Julia Child style, uh, I already have a version of the application in production with the fix. Yes. Um, so I have that fix in production, but uh, we want to verify, right? Like we don't want to just trust that that was the issue. We want to measure again and make sure that really fixes the issue. Yeah. So to do that, let's switch back over to Cloud Trace, and we're going to generate another report. This time we're going to do a report that compares between two different instances. So we're still going to look at that translate uh, URL, and we're going to compare 42 with that fixed version. Don't you wish you had that fixed version for your application? It's, it's quite handy. Um, we're going to look at that, say, over the last 24 hours in both cases. Um, so we could go ahead and submit that, but that'll take a minute to run. So I already have this one created for us ahead of time. So what you're seeing here is the two versions of the application. The blue 42 is the old one. It has the experiment running in it. And then B is the one we fixed, right? So if we examine here, it looks like way out here in the long tail latency, you can see that B has that hump that we saw before, the long tail uh, latency hump. And uh, sorry, uh, A has that, and B does not. So it seems like we fixed this issue. Yeah, I think we have done Jeff Dean proud. Yeah, I think, I, yes. I definitely think we're ready for a peer bonus for having done this. Um, so if we look at the percentiles, the story is even more clear. You can see while the old version does marginally better for the fastest 25%, um, at the long tail latency, it's very clear that our fixed version is significantly better. So, OK.
That's Google Cloud Trace. Let's switch back over to the slides. What we saw, if we switch back to slide, yeah, good. What we saw um, in this demo is that uh, we looked at how to go from logs back to the trace. Uh, so you, right in the middle of your examining logs, you can go look at trace data. Uh, then we saw how you can use percentiles very easily with the Google Cloud Trace reports to narrow down on exactly what the issue is. And then last, we saw how you can actually verify that you're improving uh, the latency situation with uh, new releases by doing a version to version comparison in the console. So Google Cloud Trace um, is very low overhead. It's designed to be an always on experience. It, today, it works on App Engine and managed VMs and on all those languages that are supported in App Engine. Um, and it is just weeks away from being ready. We're putting the last uh, spit polish on it, and it'll be ready for you in just a couple of weeks. Uh, and so look forward to that announcement. Wow, I wish I could use that. You, uh, Atisha, you can. You can. can. you can use that right now. Great. OK, um, so let's turn our attention to the Google Cloud debugger. Um, it's designed to help you get deep insight into how your application is running in production. So my observation of the way I work and when I talk to developers, they seem to work when they're debugging production issues is they get some problem report. Uh, some, their boss comes and yells at them. There's a tweet from somebody like Lady Macbeth. There's some problem report. The first thing you do is go to the monitoring dashboard or go look in logs for what might the problem be. And then the next thing you do if you're a developer, is you go stare at code, right? Isn't staring at code kind of a big part of your day? Um, you go stare at code and try to get some insight. Try to map what you're seeing in the logs and the bug report with what you see in the code. And then inevitably, the information you need is not in the logs. So you go and add more logging. And of course, when you add more logging, you need to redeploy the application into production. And then you need to search the logs again, stare at code some more, yet again add more logging. And this cycle continues until you stumble upon the solution. Is that, is that about right? OK, um, well, my observation is this is not how it always was. It seems to me that back in the good old days, we had a, we had a better solution for this. Back in the good old days, uh, when I used to debug uh, fat client applications, they ran on one machine, on one processor, on one thread. I could just stare at the code, I could set a breakpoint, and then I would view my locals, and it, this, the solution would come very quickly. This was a much faster iteration cycle for finding bugs. So why can't we have this experience for cloud applications? Right? So why can't we have this for cloud applications? Well, um, the first is our systems in the cloud are much more interdependent. There's what's called the uh, Heisenbug effect, that you can't both be debugging and reproduce the bug at the same time. Have you had that experience? Um, because our systems are so interdependent, when you try to debug one part of the system, it changes the timings that changes everything else that's going on in the system. Um, our inst we have a large degree of instance replication. Even medium-sized services have two, three, a thousand, ten thousand instances running in production. How are you possibly to know which instance to walk up to and set a breakpoint on or attach a debugger to? It's impossible to know. And finally, you can't break. This is production. You can't break in production. I can't say, I'm going to take my e-commerce site, and you know, whoever happens to hit, I'm just going to take this service offline. Whoever happens to hit is going to, going to have a terrible experience. Like, you can't do that in production. That's, that's not wise. So what we really want, the cycle of debugging in the modern cloud, in my dream world, looks like this. Uh, you can stare at code, you can set these watch points, um, and you can still view local variables. But for this to be true, I would need it to attach to all the instances simultaneously. I would need it to have negligible performance impact. If I'm going to run this in production, if it's not going to have the Heisenberg effect, it, it has to have almost no performance impact. And uh, finally, it has to actually give me the data I need, the access to the stack and locals. 
as you might guess, we're going to demo this. Uh, so let's switch over to the demo machine. So right. Atisha, I think you were saying there's yeah. a bug here, right? Yeah, I also want to get drinks tonight too, and I was trying that query. Okay, yeah. Drinks city tonight. Yeah, yeah drinks in the city tonight. So clear, uh, what's wrong with that? Drink city. When? When are we having drinks? Oh, well. Where's I, the question mark? No, I added, the other, the other day I added tonight. There's tonight. Yeah, we have tonight. It's not a question. Okay, we have <laughs> tonight and question mark. Look, we have both tonight and question mark. All right. What's the problem? Oh, I think hmm. the problem might be that we don't have them when they're together. Okay, so we have tonight space question mark works, but tonight question mark with no space, that doesn't work. Okay, so that's the bug. Yeah, that's the bug. So we're going to use that? the Google Cloud Debugger to isolate why we're having this bug in production. Mm -hmm. So let's switch over to one of our mini tabs. Like the end is it this is the last yeah. one? Okay. So what we're seeing, again, uh, we use Git to push our source code up to the private Git repository. You can also associate your Bitbucket or GitHub account with this if you'd like. Um, it's, it all still works. And what we're doing, we're going to start off the debugger with this translate endpoint. Um, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the left nav. You can get rid of the left nav. Did you know that? Um, just by clicking at the bottom there. And then I'm going to use the debugger. There, so there's a new debug icon. Um, if we go and click on that, what it will do is give me an opportunity to set a watch point. So in this case, I want to see what the value of this content is. Notice we're not actually logging content. It seems like something I want to know. So I'm going to set a watch point right here. So now what's happening is it's, the debugger is going out to all our instances, and it's saying, tell me when line 85 is executed by any of you. As soon as the first one executes line 85, we briefly pause execution of that process. We grab the stack and locals and return that data back and let the process go about its way. So you don't even notice that that process ever got paused. Um, so we can go continue. And here you're seeing we get that value. So the content, this query was kiss. Somebody mm -hmm. in the audience is interesting. OK. So we can, um, we can hit refresh here. And let's just get another one and see what's happening. I'll push my luck and see if we get another one. Uh, die. So, yeah, OK. Not really. <laughs> not going to put those together. So just together to recap what you. Brad is doing okay. here. So um, with the Cloud Debugger, he can uh, capture a request that's, that's been sent to our system and look at all the stack trace associated with that request, and then let the request go, and the user still gets the response back. Um, this, all this without, with, was just microseconds of pause. <laughs> I'm sorry, keep going. <laughs> it's okay. And um, yes. Then okay, all right. So um, let's take a look at uh, image URLs and see if we can figure out. Yeah, that looks like that might possibly be the problem. So we'll look at that one. Um, this query is, do you want to get drinks in the city tonight? Um, and, but I want to drill in on image URLs, so I'll just open that up. Uh, and you can see we're getting, we have 10 images returned. That sounds good. But if we drill in, um, what you see is we're returning a bunch of blank images and one that says cocktails. So drinks in the city, we're getting cocktails. So we, we get, we're getting some understanding of what's going on with this application. But notice that query is not exactly the one I wanted to debug. This one was drinks in the city tonight. Uh, or do you want to get drinks in the city? And the question we had was specifically about tonight question mark. So we don't want to stop on any request to this line. We only want to break when a certain condition happens. And that condition is when tonight question mark is the content. So we can do that with the condition. So we will do um, con to content dot index of. And what this is is standard Java. Whatever language you're debugging, you get to write a predicate in that language. Uh, and what was it? Tonight, question mark. Mm -hmm. And we want to say that greater than or equal to 0. So it's got to be a, a condition that evaluates to true or false. So now what's happening is on every one of the instances, again, we farmed it out to all of them, we wait for that line to be executed. When that line is executed, we run the condition over that line. If that condition is false, we just let it go. If that condition is true, we stop, grab the stack and locals, let, the, let it go on, have a small pause and let it go on, and bring back that data. 
So what you're seeing now is we're able to isolate to just the um, ones we, <laughs> why did that not work? All right. Okay, we're going to try it one more time. Let's do it again. Content.index uh, of tonight. Yeah, okay, okay. This one worked. Woohoo! Okay. Um, you can tell it's in beta. Okay. So notice in this case, we're getting all blanks. All of the items returned are blank, blank. So they're all blank. So there must be a problem in that get image URLs. So you see, we, we started with the request. We worked our way down this method. Now we know it's in a different method. So we're isolating where that bug is. So let's scroll down into this, and we'll set a breakpoint. This is in get image URLs. Oh, sorry, we'll set a watch point mm -hmm. um, to get image URLs. And you can see what this code is doing here. We canonicalize the string. Make sure you can read it. We canonicalize the string, uppercase, lowercase, that kind of thing. We split on space. And then we do a, a switch statement. That's our advanced artificial intelligence uh, that we're using to do the translation. Um, and then you can see, uh, conveniently, tonight is the first one um, at, the, at the top of the list. So we need to compare Word with tonight. Yeah, so to recap, what Brad has been doing so far is he is narrowing down um, where the problem in the code is. And he's doing that by filtering on the request, which on, only the request that has the word tonight. And whenever there's a request with that phrase in it, um, we'll trigger the watch point in the code. So what you're seeing, is, so has anybody figured this out yet? Anybody got it? Somebody's got it? OK. So um, even from the back row, we can figure this out. So uh, you can see the word is tonight question mark, but the switch statement is switching on just tonight. So it's an exact match on the string. And so it's not actually matching and following through the default to give you that. So um, in this case, uh, the fix that we have in mind here is that canonicalize is a little bit buggy. So we can come in here and we can see, sure enough, um, there's a bug. Uh, don't you wish your code had this nice hint in it where the bugs are? <laughs> so we see the bug. And like Atisha showed, at this point, we can just come into the editor and go ahead and um, find this. We can go ahead and commit that back to our production repository. Again, that might take a minute. So we already have a fixed version uh, out in production. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so you can get to a particular App Engine version uh, by putting the version first. So this is the fixed version. So oh, actually, before we do that, I'm going to push my luck. Uh, before we do that, let's switch over. If you notice over here, this is the debugging target. I'm going to switch over to fixed. right? So I want to be debugging the one we have in production. Mm -hmm. And notice as soon as I do that, oh yeah, we got to discard the change, yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't have the code. OK, we don't have the code. If we had the code, it would uh, switch us over to exactly that version of the code. So the debugger knows what version of the code uh, we want to debug. But let's go see if we have this fixed. So we'll look at tonight question mark. And we expect to see two images, right? So let's see if we actually do. And there it is. Beautiful. So what we just saw here is uh, the power of using watch points uh, so that you can set a line of code, uh, look at the stack and locals from there. We talked about um, how you can set conditions so those watch points are only uh, triggered when a certain condition happens. And we talked about uh, the version to source mapping. The debugger knows what version is there. So the Google Cloud debugger um, enables this kind of modern debugging in the cloud that we talked about. Um, in terms of performance, it, uh, the evaluation. So, so first off, just having the debugger available has no performance impact. If you, if you haven't set a watch point, there's no performance impact whatsoever. As soon as you set a watch point and we start listening, there, for every request, there's uh, 40 milliseconds, 40 microseconds. 40, 40 microseconds. microseconds. She yeah. gives me a hard time about this. 40 microseconds to evaluate. Like, is this the line we should stop on? So, it, and it's actually our measure time is less than that, but our threshold is is that. In the event that one of them actually hits your condition, and we actually have to fi we fire the debugger, we pause for less than 10 milliseconds, um, and to, that's to capture the stack. So if you think about the performance of your application, what a 10 millisecond overhead to get this kind of experience on that one request um, be a problem. So 
It gives you access to the stack and locals. Um, this is on by default, so there's no setup required. And you're able to use this today with managed VMs uh, and Java code. So we are working hard to make it available for other languages and other environments. But what's available for you to use today is managed VMs, Java. And you just have to have your source code up in the uh, Git repository that, that we offer. OK, you want to wrap us up? Yeah, so to wrap up, what we showed you today is how to eliminate errors in your production system with cloud logs. This is the URL we can go to to find out more information. We also showed you how to debug um, latency issues with cloud trace, generate reports, and compare um, two versions of your code to see if you have um, eliminated the performance problem. And lastly, what Brad just showed you was with Cloud Debugger, you can capture the request that comes into your system, capture the stack trace, look at, evaluate the execution, let the request go. Um, and you can keep doing that until you have narrowed down where your problem is. And with that, these are the contact information for our session. Thank you. All right, thank you. And we, we have about uh, three, three or four minutes for questions. So any, any, there, I think there are mics right here and right here, just so we can get on the recording. If there's any questions, <laughs> if not, we'll be available <clears throat> offline. No one want to fund our emotions. It must have later. been completely clear. <laughs> Somebody coming? Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, so the question was um, that there is sort of a choice to be made between App Engine and Compute Engine. Will these, do these tools work on one or the other? How does that work? So our goal with a platform all up is to have a seamless continuum and have you be able to use, basically use these tools on whatever part of the platform um, stack you, you choose to use. And so, um, yeah, so that's our, that's our goal. They're at various stages of uh, being ready for different ones. So do you want to yeah, talk about we logs? Yeah, do, we do have plans to um, show logs from all of your, um, all your services in your project in one, um, in one view together, merge. So including without, without, raw without, VMs, right? Including yes, raw exactly, computer yeah. engine VMs. We'll actually suck the, we know where the Apache logs are and where you know, Hadoop stores its logs, and we'll suck all those and put them into the same log viewer. Um, that Atisha showed. In terms of Cloud Trace, we're also working on a model to get that uh, HTTP profiling utility available for GCE and uh, Container Engine as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, for the debugger, um, that'll actually come out on Compute Engine relatively, uh, they told me not to commit to dates, but relatively soon. <laughs> Other questions? OK, back, yeah. Yes, good question. So I mentioned our Git repository. Uh, you can go associate your Bitbucket or GitHub uh, account, just doing the OAuth dance. Uh, you can associate your GitHub project. And if you, when you commit to the master branch of your GitHub project or your Bitbucket project, uh, it'll just mirror into our cloud. Uh, and it, we have a read-only mirror of your source. So all the debugger stuff and whatnot will just keep working. Okay, so I think we're out of time, but, oh, sorry, one more, one more, okay. <laughs> Any plans to support or to Git submodels? Sorry, Git what model? Uh, submodels. Submodels. Oh, submodules. So something, you're saying a deployment unit smaller than a module, or, what do you, I just want to make sure I get it. Git has an amazing feature to combine different repositories in one. Ah, it's called yes. Git submodels. I see, okay. Let's follow up after on that. We definitely want to stay current with whatever the state of the art is with that, so we're happy to talk about that. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay.